Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today, let's take a look at the latest release from Presonus, Studio One 5, as well as their new subscription service, Sphere. Now, I've been using Studio One since day one. I instantly fell in love with it because of the combination of ease of use and its powerful capabilities as well as the comprehensive array of included instruments and plugins. I like the concept that you can take your song from raw idea to fully mastered song all in one environment. Plus I love the songwriting features such as the arrangement tools, the chord track, the scratch pad, and then there's the project page for mastering and so much more. Very cool software. Now Presonus has unveiled Studio One 5 and they've made this great software package even better. In total, Studio One version 5 has more than 70 new features, which break down into four broad categories. Plugins, composing, editing and mixing, and the all new show page. Now a cool thing is that many of the new features are based on requests from and discussions with end users on the answers.presonus.com website. So let's head over to my home studio and we'll take a closer look at Studio One 5. Okay, let's dive in. Today I'm running Studio One 5 on a 2014 MacBook Pro as a side note, I'm also running the free Studio One Remote Remote Control app on my iPad. I really like combining Studio One Remote with Studio One on the computer because it gives me so much control over what's happening. I highly recommend adding it to your rig. As I mentioned, there are more than 70 improvements and new features in Studio One 5, which mainly fall into four broad categories. Plugins, editing and mixing, composing or music creation, and the show page. There's not enough time to get into every single new feature, so I'll be hitting some of the high points. We'll begin with the plugins. Studio One 5 comes bundled with an array of built-in studio quality 64-bit audio effects, ranging from EQs and compressors to delays and reverbs and much more. Right off the bat, you'll notice that Presonus has given us new plug-in user interface designs. Their new colors and looks and the analog delay and others have a more vintage design. There's also a sidechain available on all Dynamics plugins for triggering the effect using another signal. It's easy to assign the channel you want to feed the sidechain and you can quickly toggle the sidechain on and off. You can even select multiple channels to feed the sidechain and dial in the exact blend of those channels you want to use. Another nice new plugin feature is that all plugins that have a drive control, such as the analog delay, now feature a state space model tube as part of the drive circuit. This gives you the ability to add nice warm tube flavor to those effects. The Pro EQ plugin now has linear phase filters, input and output meters, and a spectrum analyzer with four views. The 12th octave view includes a piano keyboard view, so you can line up frequencies with musical notes. Let's move on to some of the new editing and mixing features in Studio One 5. We've had the ability to save scenes in Studio One, which saves configurations of the mixer. But with Studio One 5, they've really upped scenes to total recall. Everything is stored in a scene now, including input and output channels, channel settings, cue, inserts, and so on. There's a Recall Options menu on the lower left that lets you choose what's included in the recall, such as volume, pan, and mute settings, inserts and sends, input controls, and so on. You can even have it recall a single channel with its settings. And here's a pro user tip. I like to set up a page in Studio One Remote on my iPad that allows me to quickly jump among scenes. A new feature is Studio One's dedicated Listen Bus. You enable it under the Wrench or Options menu in the mixer. The Listen Bus can provide a separate feed to monitors or headphones, and you can use it to solo channels without affecting cue mixes. You could also use it to drive a stereo meter or a room calibration system without affecting the main bus. This adds even more routing versatility to the Studio One mixer. There's also PFL or Pre-Fader Listen and AFL or After Fader Listen. We've long had the Pipeline plugin in Studio One, which allows you to route signals out of the mixer to an external processor and then bring them back in. But now they've added aux channels, which provide a way to bring external sound sources like synths, keyboards, and guitar modelers directly into the Studio One mixer through your audio interface. An aux channel is basically a live input that allows you to route in external sources, mix and process them, bounce them, and so on, just like any other channel in the mixer. You can even configure and save aux channels for your external sources, which allows you to save them in the browser and drag them in whenever you want to use them. This lets you treat hardware synthesizers just like a virtual instrument. With aux channels, you may no longer need an external mixer for your synths, keyboards, and other sources. A top 10 user request that's been added to Studio One 5 is clip gain envelopes. This allows you to automate the level within a clip by drawing in a curve. The clip gain envelope is pre-insert in the signal flow, so it makes a great way to tame big peaks before the channel hits a compressor. You can zoom in almost to the sample level and get super detailed. A new time stretch mode has also been added, analog tape mode, which works like you're slowing down or speeding up a tape so tempo and pitch are locked together. 
It renders the files in the background, so you can even do this in real time. There are many new major composing, MIDI, and music creation features in Studio 1.5, and many of these were feature requests from professional composers working in film and TV. A big one is the score view for displaying MIDI parts as music notation. This merges technology from PreSonus's Notion 6 notation software into Studio 1. It's not a replacement for Notion for those who want publication quality notation, but it does give you a great way to view and edit MIDI as an alternative to drum view and piano roll view. You can choose to have the notation view break out to a separate window, which is great if you're using multiple monitors. You can also view multiple tracks as a score. A cool feature is being able to pin the notation window in place and then open up a second view, such as a piano roll. Now when you edit one, the changes sync up in the other. You can play in notes in real time or step time, import a MIDI file, or draw in notes in rests. You can insert musical symbols in the track and they'll trigger playback changes, for example trills, dynamics markings, and so on. If you want to create and print a chart, you can send your score to Notion and tweak it there for perfect layout. You can also move a score from Notion into Studio One. Everything stays intact as you go back and forth. In fact, if you've added symbols in Notion that aren't in Studio One, they'll still show up if you move the file into Studio One, you just won't be able to edit them. The score edit's a really big addition to Studio One for composers. Another big addition for users of large sound libraries is support for MIDI key switches. Many libraries and virtual instruments use certain MIDI notes to control various functions inside the instrument. Now Studio One can treat key switches separately so they don't get transposed or edited along with MIDI data. They show up in a separate automation lane in the instrument track. The automation will automatically recognize the key switches in Presence XT, for example, and third parties can provide key switch maps for their instruments. Users can also create and exchange key switch maps, just as we do now with drum and pitch maps. MPE is now supported for those instruments that have it, such as Rolly controllers. You specify if your device supports MPE when you're setting it up as an external device. In Studio One, you'll be able to see up to three controllers per note and poly pressure for PreSonus's own Atom controller. Now let's talk about perhaps the biggest addition to Studio One 5, the all-new Show Page. The Show Page provides a fully integrated live performance environment that makes it possible to run a complete show with setlist management within Studio One, whether you're using backing tracks, virtual instruments, or real instruments. Within the show page, you have a set list which contains songs, musical cues, patch changes, and so on. With patch changes, you can completely automate all your effects and instruments to follow exactly along with set list items. You can also edit a show on the fly while it's playing back so you can instantly match your show to crowd response. Instead of tracks, you can add players, and there are three types. First, we have backing track players for audio files, and these can be full mixes or they can be stems so you can control what plays back and the mix of those stems. Audio can stop when it's done playing, you can continue to the next setlist item after a pause, or it can loop. You can transfer a mix from a song that's open in Studio One, or you can drag and drop from the browser. You can also work back and forth between Studio One's song page and the show page, just like you do with the project page if you're mastering a complete project created in Studio One. Then there's real instrument players. These are for external audio sources like hardware synthesizers or a guitar that's being played through a modeler or plug-in, or through a chain of effects. You can even copy and paste the exact plugins and settings out of a song and play through them live. Basically, this means that your whole band could play through players in the show page and everything can be controlled from right in one place. The third type of player is a virtual instrument player for any type of virtual instrument you want to play during that song in the set list. You can even send a complete instrument rack for a song from the song page into a show. Inside the show, you have macro controls which can be assigned to any parameter or any type of player. We can, for example, set one macro knob to control the volume of a backing track. Or we could set a fader to control pan. These can also be mapped to control external hardware devices. There are four different configurations. The first has eight knobs, eight faders, and eight buttons. The second has 16 knobs. The third has 16 faders. And the fourth has 16 buttons. And you can significantly shape the response of all these controls using the transform window. You can mix your players using the mixer, and you can drag and drop instruments and plug-in effects directly from the browser. When your show is all ready, you switch over to performance mode, which is a custom view that provides a clean user interface with just the essential elements for a live performance. Transport controls, metering, setlist navigation, and real-time controllers. So clearly the show page can be used to provide backing tracks, virtual instruments, and any effects for a live band or a solo performer. But the possibilities are really vast. You could, for example, also use it to generate sound effects or music cues for a theater or art installation performance.
We've really just scratched the surface here of what the show page can do. The show page is already awesome and this is only version 1. I expect we're going to see a lot of new things added here as time goes on. Likewise, we've really only scratched the surface of everything that's new and cool in Studio 1.5. It's an amazing upgrade to this powerful music creation environment. I have to say I'm blown away by everything that Presonus has packed into Studio 1.5. They've really listened to their users and they've incorporated some brilliant cutting edge ideas as well. Clearly they're focused on musicians making music both live and in the studio. It's such great stuff. While we're talking about Studio 1.5, I should also mention that Studio 1 Artist has also been upgraded to version 1.5 as well. Studio 1 Artist 5 now includes third-party plug-in support, as well as support for Studio 1 Remote and Rewire. There's no longer any need for optional add-ons to access those features, but the price for Studio 1 Artist 5 hasn't changed. You'll also get many of the new editing, mixing, and plug-in features we talked about in the full version of Studio 1 5. And you still get unlimited tracks and channels, no limit to the number of inputs and outputs you can access on your audio interface, and support for audio interfaces from a wide range of manufacturers. As you can see, Studio 1.5 takes the concept of a DAW to an entirely new level. There are so many great features in the new version of the software. I think you're going to find it to be a tremendous creative tool and centerpiece for both your studio and your live performance rig. And speaking of creative tools, there's one more thing we need to talk about today, and that's PreSonus's announcement of Sphere, a subscription service that brings together all of PreSonus's creative tools. Here's how Sphere works. You subscribe to PreSonus Sphere for just $14.95 a month. And you get everything, and I mean everything, that PreSonus releases for software products now and for as long as you subscribe. So as new things are announced and released, you'll automatically get them as part of your subscription. As far as what you get in Sphere, you get Studio One, of course, and it's always the latest version. You also get the latest version of Notion, PreSonus' notation software. And you get every plugin and every virtual instrument from PreSonus. And you get all the content, meaning libraries and so on, that PreSonus releases. Beyond every piece of software and every bit of content available now and in the future, you also get the ability to back up all of your Studio One settings to Sphere, so if you're not working on your home computer, you can instantly recall your setup on any computer you might be using. And you get a ton of learning and tutorial content, both from PreSonus and from third parties. And part of this is the new Expert Chat. Expert Chat isn't really tech support, rather it's a place where you can post questions about PreSonus software and an expert user can answer. You'll be able to get answers from other users who are doing exactly what you're doing. In some cases, those experts may even forward your question on to PreSonus tech support for more information. Sphere also provides you with 30 gigabytes of cloud storage, which you can expand to 100 gigabytes, and it provides an easy way to collaborate. Anything can be uploaded to the Sphere cloud, from rough mixes to files from other DAWs. You can also directly send Studio One mixdowns straight to Sphere. And non-Sphere users can be invited to access your cloud storage for collaboration. And you can access the cloud using any device, your computer or a mobile device. With Sphere, PreSonus is offering an amazing value. If you add it all up, right now the value totals around $3,000 with lots more to come in the future. So that $3,000 number is just the start and it'll only go up. And remember, the price is just $14.95 per month. It's a great deal. Now if you already have a license or want to purchase a PreSonus product, this doesn't change existing prices and licensing. Sphere just offers an alternative, not a replacement in that situation. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the latest version of Studio One from PreSonus. Studio One 5 is the result of more than a year of work, many user suggestions, and brilliant ideas and technological solutions from the designers. Now you can take your project not only from raw idea to finished production in your studio using Studio One 5, but you can also take your music on stage with the all new song page. And then there's PreSonus' new Sphere subscription service. I think this is going to be a game changer for many musicians. Now we've covered a lot in this video. If you have questions about Studio One 5, Studio One Artist 5, or Sphere, visit Sweetwater.com or contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or visit Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.